well, now that we have the uh, power-ups displaying, we need to actually make them do something. So uh, we have these objects, but they're not actually being used yet. It's all, all that's happening right now is uh, the, um, the map is displaying in green and red, but when those blocks get hit, we're not actually creating any um, power-up. I and mean, nothing sends down, we don't create an object, so we have to go over and create an object. And the way we're going to do that is we're actually going to keep track of all the power-ups so more than one can be active at any given time with an array list which can expand to uh, have as many as are hit and dropping at, the, at any given time. We're going to make sure, we're going to go change uh, the game panel's um, update and we're going to, you know, we're going to update all the power-ups, we're going to draw all the power-ups, and then under the collisions we have to actually kind of handle all those power-ups in a couple different places. So the first thing we need to do is create an array list of power-ups. So We'll create it with the entities. I guess it's kind of an entity. Um, private array list of power up objects. Power ups. And um, these entities should just all be private. Um, basically, everything in uh, uh, in the fields should just always be private by default unless it's a final constant and you have reason to make it otherwise other than private we have to import the array lists object from the uh, utilities we should initialize the array list so power ups equals new array list of power up objects Now, we'll need to loop over all those, and so we're going to talk about a couple different things. There's this other kind of loop, it's called the enhanced for loop. And so I want to go down to update, and we're going to, nothing is in the power-ups yet, but we want to update all the power-ups. So we're going to use what's called an uh, enhanced for loop, so for, and this is on the AP subset. So you can do a loop that's like this, for, instead of having to do the indexes and then get the item in the index and the array list, you can just do for power up, so you specify a type, give this generic one a name like PU just power up and then you type a colon and then you say we want to cycle through the array list called power ups and so this loop um, this loop is going to make its way through all of uh, the items listed in the power ups and then and put them into PU like this is a power up object it's just going to go through the array and slam each one that's listed in the array into the object, into the, the power up object called PU. So then all you have to do is call PU.update. Uh, and this goes through and updates every power up item in the array list power ups. You don't have to do the dot size, it's just a simpler format. So it's an enhanced for loop for going through array lists um, or lists or collections. And we'll talk about the different varieties of those at some point too. So we're going to use the same. Um, the same thing for drawing power ups. So public, we're going to create a method public void draw power ups, and we're going to say for power up pu colon power ups pu dot draw, and that is a method that will draw all of the power ups, and we will have those drawn last. So draw power ups. But we also need to add the power ups uh, when they uh, when the ball hits one of the bricks that it should be a power up we need to start one of those things dropping and then when the thing hits the paddle if it hits the paddle we need to do something else. So. Um, first of all, we'll handle the brick uh, one. So if ball intersects brick wrecked, then we need to say we need to do something. If if that rectangle it hits is a power up, if uh, the map dot get uh, oops, sorry, the map dot get map array 
at row column is greater than three because three is our breakable brick. So if it's a power up, then we want to do something. We want to add a new power up. Power ups dot add new power up. And the power up object takes some parameters, so let's go review what those are. So it has a x start, y start, type width, height. So let's go x start, y start, type width, height. Uh, x start is just um, brick x. Because we already calculated oh brick x right up here. So it's just brick x, brick y, and then the type is just this. There's the value stored there, that's the type. And then um, brick width and brick height are listed for us already. We grab those, so brick width, brick height. And why is this angry at me right now? Add arguments to match int, 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 int. So five integers. One, two, three, four, five. Thought I did. Not quite sure why it's angry at me right now. Power ups add new power up, brick x, brick y, the map that get map array row column. Oh, it's angry about this parenthesis, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Sometimes that stuff is so hard to see. Um, so we're going to add a new power up, and then we also have to do a couple of other things. So we'll say. We need to set the value the map dot set brick row column to three. So we want the reason we do that is because if it's a five and we do and we just bump the map down, we just say brick hit, it'll go to four, so it'll become a green power up. We don't want to do that. We want it to go down to three, which is just a breakable brick. Um, and then, so that's done. Else, if it's not a power up, all we want to do is the map dot hit brick row column um, and let's see what this is doing it's not going to do anything to the paddle yet so let's just see if it's if it actually starts falling because I think it will when we hit a green or a red all right here we go yeah so that brick actually falls uh, which is pretty cool so I think that's enough for this video and next time I'll show you how to actually make them make some adjustments to the paddle or ball.